Be advised the voice and thoughts of Mind Over John do not reflect those of Spotify or Disney Thunder parody discretion advised. So our story goes, destined to be retold. The darkness was cast upon the land which magic and happiness began. And then it came to pass, a dark mystical overlord filled with greed came into power. With an iron fist he would shudder benefits features and services. The wretched beast could not be stopped, any and all attempts were near fatal if not immediately jaded. With hopes crushed, cast exhausted and guests on edge from waiting in virtual queues to nowhere. In secret who shall meet, but a council of mice. You know them as shareholders, these poor souls had the task of appointing improving an SLA, that's a service level agreement for mere mortals to function. But as the council voiced and fussed, what more can we do? Everything we try he slams into our face with a raging thundering new. And then it happened, in faint tone Tinkerbell fluttered about. I have thought, I'll share with you, and close her eyes to say. I wish I may, I wish I might bring back the creator tonight. So the council gathered together and chanted with all their might, and I swear a blue light shimmered and there she stood among us. Thank you I've heard your plea, but listen to me. I will find your creator, but no no soul shall know and that remains with me. And with flash of blue I just knew, what the hell did we just do? Hello Bob, I come in peace. By order of the alliance I must insist you come with me. I will do no such thing. I don't know you and I'm retired from the business so no thank you. Perhaps you misunderstood. I am John Lyason to Alexa. As members of the Alliance, we are called in when things go wrong, and by far things have gone horribly wrong. Am I in trouble? No, we're in trouble. The kingdom is falling apart. There was evil and greed that nearly destroyed it. Kingdom, look I'm sorry to hear things are bad, but I'm retired. Yay about that. As of today your retirement is null and void. Sir, you have been reactivated. Regardless, find someone else. I'm not interested in not going. Understand you are coming the easy way or the hard way. No thank you. Good day to you. So the hard way it is it? Thank you Bob for joining us, as we prepare to leave for Alliance Airlines. I'm sorry, but I don't recall how I got into this vehicle. Well sir, we merely walked up the path, and opened the door and took a seat anxiously I may add. I must admit, I don't actually remember but if you said I did, it must be true. How much longer until we arrive? As you will learn, time does not mean the same to you and I, snaps. We have arrived. Welcome to Alliance Airlines. At this time we would like to welcome all pod travelers aboard Alliance Airlines and to open your Alexa app by selecting the airplane on the bottom of your screen, here you will see three choices. 1. Tell us where you want to go. 2. When would you like to arrive. 3. Duration of trip. For your safety, we are now forced to remind you, ownership in the future and past is prohibited and a failsafe is in place for emergency return if breached. These safety measures protect all, and guards the fabrics of time. Fabrics of time. Bob, try not to overthink this, just open your Alexa app, and tap three times and swipe up and do it quickly while nobody is looking. Finally upon completion of your trip, Alexa will bring your home by the midnight hour. Please remember, you've been scanned and you will recalled. We thank you for choosing Alliance Airlines and with that your history. Ah, we've arrived on time. Arrived, left, what? Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, mantengas alejado de las puertas. Ooh, what is happening? I don't understand, are we? I mean, is this another track to Magic Kingdom? No, sir. I think you need to look again. Ooh, my wow. What you see before you is Maleficent Kingdom, a full-size castle. Now the teacher becomes the student. Ooh, my friend, it's been a very long time. But I assure you, I'm no ghost. I won't bore you with the long version, but I was rescued in the far future by the Alliance. They came upon me said my friend we have searched for you as a favor and told this would help make you better, but we need a favor in return. I think in my days of opening my eyes, I was more than overwhelmed to feel needed once again, so I returned with Alexa to this world, and we started building what you see before you. Now that's a backstory that will haunt me, but it still does not explain why I can perform magic. So you noticed the sus? Yay, that took me by surprise as well. Snapped fingers, lights dimmed, listen, Maleficent Kingdom is enhanced with science and magic. We can literally build by thought. This changed the entire dynamic of how I built Disney, that took time and planning and so many permits. But this castle is proof. 
Bob, she has only been with us about a month. Do you understand what I am telling you? You think and visualize and poof you have a full working concept before you. When I was able to compose myself, I thought long and hard before I came to the Alliance with an unwitted plan to pull all our resources and gathering my imaginers. I know I am asking, but please see it from another view. I need you to think deep within. In the past you had limits and rules, and granting you full creative rights show me what you can do. What can I do? You want me to conjure an attraction by thought. Just like that, and you telling me it just appears in a blink of an eye or faster. No, that's impossible. My friend, here there are no boundaries. Care to try? Just close your eyes. Now visualize the object of your desire and in your mind. Build it. With a sigh, Bob closed his eyes and he imagined, if you had wings tomorrow land transit authority, be sure to select your destination before you board. You will board a full-size airliner simulator that you will be immersed from takeoff to landing, experience the excitement, see the sights by opening your screen to see a vibrant HD of the city to country, engines. Travel Channel AI will use your selection and show your destination on landing for your personalized experience of a lifetime. Taking off summer 2024. Bob, opened his eyes with a smiling Walt. You're doing it Bob, that's the magic of this kingdom. We can do so much amazing things in record time. Do you realize the implications of what I am showing you? I don't think you do. From a creator's view I took away the waiting and planning. I took away the approval process. Bob I took away the no we can't do that. Every limitation that has ever stopped us from growing, those walls are gone. It's beautiful Walt it truly is magical. Sight, you're not coming back with me when this is built or you. No. That was the pact between Alexa and I I was granted a temporary stay, to build a new legacy. As the founder and creator, my stay is contingent on the completion of Maleficent Kingdom, but between you and me, I say no end as a dreamer. And so the story goes, when we dream there are no bounds to an end. We now return you to Chapter 18 already in progress. In which Feliz Fogg, Passepartout, and Fix go each about his business. The weather was bad during the latter days of the voyage. The wind, obstinately remaining in the northwest, blew a gale, and retarded the steamer. The Rangoon rolled heavily and the passengers became impatient of the long, monstrous waves which the wind raised before their path. A sort of tempest on the 3rd of November, the squall knocking the vessel about with fury, and the waves running high. The Rangoon reefed all her sails, and even the rigging proved too much, whistling and shaking amid the squall. The steamer was forced to proceed slowly, and the captain estimated that she would reach Hong Kong 20 hours behind time, and more if the storm lasted. Felice Fogg gazed at the tempestuous sea, which seemed to be struggling especially to delay him, with his habitual tranquility. He never changed countenance for an instant, though a delay of 20 hours, by making him too late for the Yokohama boat, would almost inevitably cause the loss of the wager. But this man of nerve manifested neither impatience nor annoyance, it seemed as if the storm were a part of his program, and had been foreseen. Outer was amazed to find him as calm as he had been from the first time she saw him. Fix did not look at the state of things in the same light. The storm greatly pleased him. His satisfaction would have been complete had the Rangoon been forced to retreat before the violence of wind and waves. Each delay filled him with hope, for it became more and more probable that Fogg would be obliged to remain some days at Hong Kong, and now the heavens themselves became his allies, with the gusts and squalls. It mattered not that they made him seasick, he made no account of this inconvenience, and, whilst his body was writhing under their effects, his spirit bounded with hopeful exultation. Passepartout was enraged beyond expression by the unpropitious weather. Everything had gone so well till now. Earth and sea had seemed to be at his master's service, steamers and railways obeyed him, wind and steam united to speed his journey. Had the hour of adversity come, Passepartout was as much excited as if the £20,000 were to come from his own pocket. The storm exasperated him, the gale made him furious, and he longed to lash the obstinate sea into obedience. Poor fellow. Fix carefully concealed from him his own satisfaction, for, had he betrayed it, Passepartout could scarcely have restrained himself from personal violence. Passepartout remained on deck as long as the tempest lasted, being unable to remain quiet below, and taking it into his head to aid the progress of the ship by lending a hand with the crew. He overwhelmed the captain, officers, and sailors, who could not help laughing at his impatience, with all sorts of questions. 
he wanted to know exactly how long the storm was going to last, whereupon he was referred to the barometer, which seemed to have no intention of rising. Passepartout shook it, but with no perceptible effect, for neither shaking nor maledictions could prevail upon it to change its mind. On the 4th, however, the sea became more calm, and the storm lessened its violence, the wind veered southward, and was once more favorable. Passepartout cleared up with the weather. Some of the sails were unfurled, and the Rangoon resumed its most rapid speed. The time lost could not, however, be regained. Land was not signaled until 5 o'clock on the morning of the 6th, the steamer was due on the 5th. For Lee's fog was 24 hours behind hand, and the Yokohama steamer would, of course, be missed. The pilot went on board at 6, and took his place on the bridge, to guide the Rangoon through the channels to the port of Hong Kong. Passepartout longed to ask him if the steamer had left for Yokohama, but he dared not, for he wished to preserve the spark of hope, which still remained till the last moment. He had confided his anxiety to fix who, the sly rascal, tried to console him by saying that Mr. Fogg would be in time if he took the next boat, but this only put Passepartout in a passion. Mr. Fogg, older than his servant, did not hesitate to approach the pilot, and tranquilly ask him if he knew when a steamer would leave Hong Kong for Yokohama. At high tide tomorrow morning. Ah. Said Mr. Fogg, without betraying any astonishment. Passepartout, who heard what passed, would willingly have embraced the pilot, while Fix would have been glad to twist his neck. What is the steamer's name? Asked Mr. Fogg. The Carnatic. Ought she not to have gone yesterday? Yes, sir, but they had to repair one of her boilers, and so her departure was postponed till tomorrow. Thank you. Returned Mr. Fogg, descending mathematically to the saloon. Passepartout clasped the pilot's hand and shook it heartily in his delight, exclaiming, Pilot, you are the best of good fellows. The pilot probably does not know to this day why his responses won him this enthusiastic greeting. He remounted the bridge, and guided the steamer through the flotilla of junks, tankers, and fishing boats which crowd the harbor of Hong Kong. At one o'clock the Rangoon was at the quay, and the passengers were going ashore. Chance had strangely favored for Lee's fog, for had not the Carnatic been forced to lie over for repairing her boilers, she would have left on the 6th of November, and the passengers for Japan would have been obliged to await for a week the sailing of the next steamer. Mr. Fogg was, it is true, 24 hours behind his time, but this could not seriously imperil the remainder of his tour. The steamer which crossed the Pacific from Yokohama to San Francisco made a direct connection with that from Hong Kong, and it could not sail until the latter reached Yokohama, and if Mr. Fogg was 24 hours late on reaching Yokohama, this time would no doubt be easily regained in the voyage of 22 days across the Pacific. He found himself, then, about 24 hours behind hand, 35 days after leaving London. The Carnatic was announced to leave Hong Kong at 5 the next morning. Mr. Fogg had 16 hours in which to attend to his business there, which was to deposit Outer safely with her wealthy relative. On landing, he conducted her to a palanquin, in which they repaired to the club hotel. A room was engaged for the young woman, and Mr. Fogg, after seeing that she wanted for nothing, set out in search of her cousin Gigi. He instructed Passepartout to remain at the hotel until his return, that Outer might not be left entirely alone. Mr. Fogg repaired to the exchange, where, he did not doubt, everyone would know so wealthy and considerable a personage as the Parsi merchant. Meeting a broker, he made the inquiry, to learn that Gigi had left China two years before, and, retiring from business with an immense fortune, had taken up his residence in Europe, in Holland the broker thought, with the merchants of which country he had principally traded. Feliz Fogg returned to the hotel, begged a moment's conversation with Alda, and without more ado, apprised her that Gigi was no longer at Hong Kong, but probably in Holland. Alda at first said nothing. She passed her hand across her forehead, and reflected a few moments. Then, in her sweet, soft voice, she said, What ought I to do, Mr. Fogg? It is very simple. Responded the gentleman. Go on to Europe. But I cannot intrude. You do not intrude, nor do you in the least embarrass my project. Passport out. Monsieur. Go to the Carnatic, and engage three cabins. Passport out, delighted that the young woman, who was very gracious to him, was going to continue the journey with them, went off at a brisk gait to obey his master's order. And with that we now are in pause. I hope that you will forgive me in the long delays between voice changes and software adjustments of sort. 
At least you now have an understanding why it takes as long as it does to create a single chapter and the great lengths placed together to include a mini-episode. My friends there is still much of this story to cover, but as we wind down I'll just say it like this thank you one and all. Until we meet again, see you in chapter 19.